I'm a senior research scientist and um, I'm a virologist, so I'm interested in studying viruses. But on campus, I'm a senior lecturer at the Department of Theoretical and Applied Biology. I love microbiology, so I teach microbiology. I teach research methods to both undergraduate and postgraduate students. So I don't think I was away for a long, continuous time. It was short periods. And um, in 2008, I got the opportunity to be on a project um, and we're interested in looking at respiratory causes of respiratory viruses in African children because the intention or you know that of course in Africa almost every fever is deemed to be caused by malaria but we're interested in the other things that causes fever or that cause fever in these children so I had to go to Germany indeed I went to the oldest tropical institute in Germany known as the Bernard Knox Institute for Tropical Medicine, where I had a rare opportunity of working under one amazing um, virologist known as Christian Drosten. So if you have been following the COVID um, issues or news in Germany, I mean, he's the one person fronting, giving advice, virology related advice to um, the country in Germany. So I had to go into his lab to train for my PhD because like I said I was interested in um, designing assays or a test to look out for the other things related to fevers. I, I was interested in the respiratory virus so I was in his lab um, getting some hands-on um, experience or skills and then once I was done I had to come back and sort of implement those protocols over here. But whilst there, I realized they were bringing samples from, um, from is it um, Panama? And these were fecal samples of bats. And I sort of felt um, I was interested in, in those samples. And then in 2012, I had to go back. This time, Christian had moved from, um, from Hamburg, from BNITM to Bonn to the um, University Clinic of Bonn, the virology unit or the virology department. So I had to go to Bonn and also do a couple of, of things. Then at a point in time in um, 2012, I had to, no 2014, I had to go back because there was an outbreak of SARS coronavirus and um, we decided to collect a couple of, cho of samples from the Hajj pilgrim. So I had to go to Germany for three to four months to work on those samples. So I did not have the streets like a two year long stay. No, I don't think I would have been able to <laughs> stay for that long period of time. Um, amazing. I mean, a lot of things, my perception about science and about research about how things you know the germans are known as german machines so i keep on saying that look if you had that rare opportunity of being trained in german then it means that you are really a uh, top notch and the guy i was working with christian i mean the whole world everybody was bringing their samples into his lab so the perception and you know what how to even walk as a scientist you can't be slow because you are always thinking and all these things changed a lot of things about about me so it was a positive one of course beyond um building or getting those hands-on experience skills highly skilled um different things to you know to help me execute a lot of activities in the lab and of course when it comes to collaborations because he collaborates with a lot of people i mean all over the world i also ended up getting a lot of collaborations so after my phd i was a postdoc for two continuous time periods i also got a lot of collaborators and these collaborators i'm currently working with so the transition from a PhD student to a postdoctoral scientist to a young faculty member, so-called early career researcher. And I don't know how I can classify myself now, whether I'm still an early career researcher or not. But the critical thing um, I, I brought back 
is i will not say was is um, that's collaborative spirit because now i don't think you can sit all alone in your lab and do all sorts of things you definitely need to collaborate with people so that collaboration and um, the change in mentality you know for us we have our own way of doing things but out there there's a lot of competition so you've got to outshine all the others and i think um, these are things that I decided to instill in myself. Yeah. So currently, I locally I have a collaborate a, a, a number of collaborators. Um, you has um, um, here, of course, on KNUST campus. UCC. I haven't been able to stretch my tentacles over there, but I'm sure one day I'll be. And uh, internationally. I have a couple of uh, collaborators in the UK, University of Surrey, and then in Germany, of course, Christian is still my collaborator. And again, in Germany, there's another old um, veterinary related institute, FLI, where I have a couple of collaborators there as well. And then in Africa, I have um, <laughs> some few collaborators as well, uh, some in Tanzania and uh, so on and so forth. Yeah. So my students, they keep on telling me that I do my things differently. So we, you know that for us as Africans, the student lecture relationship, so the students would want to always come and see your face, you know, meet up with you. But out there, it is, you, you'll only meet the person in the, in the hallway or the coffee room or things like that. Everything is about emailing. So things as simple as how to send emails, when you are crafting that email message, what needs to be in the email, you need to craft a subject, an appealing subject. So all these little, little, little things, we are not exposed to them. So these are things I try to instill in my students, my project students, they tell me that I give them a lot of work. Um, things like how to use a reference, man. you know, the simple, simple things that we may never be able to teach our students in class this is um, outside the classroom but in the classroom time management is um, is critical mentorship is also very critical for me so these are the few things and of course um, I do a lot of application related um, activities in my class in my classroom I mean in my classroom environment so occasionally I'll ask all of them to bring their phones out because I see that for this generation they are phone technology related so I incorporate a lot of these things in my classroom occasionally we play games I mean not just any game but related to the subjects we are you know studying or they are learning in class I think it brings in a lot of fun excitement they are able to relate to it very well I mean now you can't just go stand in front of them and rattle um, they will never even listen to you but as you incorporate some of these things which I try to do <laughs> I'm not perfect yet but I think I try to do a number of these things in my in my classroom so um, currently I said I started working on respiratory viruses and um, just in 2002 we know there was an outbreak of SARS coronavirus and uh, in 2012-2013 there was an outbreak of another coronavirus this time caused by MERS coronavirus and like I said when I went to Germany to Hamburg in 2006 to get hands-on training I realized they were bringing um, fecal samples of bats so I told Christian that that's for us in Ghana, bat is a delicacy and you actually find bats flying all over. There's actually a huge colony in Kumase. So he decided to come down and uh, we went on an exploratory visit. We took samples, fecal samples, and we did it in a very simple way. We only lined the floor of the under the trees where the bats were hanging and we allowed them to you know pull to ease themselves and we brought the samples to here to kccr so i always say it with a lot of pride that we're able to detect the first few coronaviruses here right here on this campus and so that sort of um, pushed us or catapulted us to get into studies related to coronaviruses. I think we've been very quiet. We don't talk about the things we've done because, you know, as scientists, you rather want to put your information in a, in a peer-reviewed article for your promotion and so on and so forth. So that was the first thing we did. 
And then when MERS coronavirus also emerged in, in the Arabian Peninsula, um, we know that our Muslim brothers every year, they embark on this pilgrim pilgrimage so we decided to pitch camp at the Hajj village in Accra so as and when they came back from Mecca we took a very simple we always do our things in a very simple way so we took a swaps from the Anesa region and then we brought those samples here to this to our lab we're interested in looking for MERS coronavirus but unfortunately for us we didn't find anything uh, we rather found a lot of um, respiratory viruses and then obviously when SARS Corona, because of you know the experience and the work we had done um, on coronaviruses, we're well positioned for SARS coronavirus too. So in terms of what the project I'm currently um, executing, it's more of one health related things uh, where we try to connect um, the pathogens we see in human beings we check out if we can see those patho or related pathogens in animals and then we try to look out for those pathogens in wildlife as well so basically this is what i have been doing but you know what if i look for pathogens in animals i'm more of a, a human public health person so we also try to offer some services to some of our peripheral hospitals as well as their referral hospitals so if clinicians see rare clinical presentations they will take samples and bring those samples to to us to sort of you know look into and um, another project i'm i'm currently working on is on um, some zoonotic infections in in monkeys in monkeys um, like um, syphilis because elsewhere these pathogens are in the monkeys and you find the monkeys with lesions and uh, human beings end up contracting this pathogen from the monkeys but we have syphilis in ghana but we don't see our monkeys with lesions so that connection so i'm trying to do this work with them um so a couple of guys from tanzania as well as from from germany then in terms of uh, so i'm still on the one health thing for the environment we see a lot of water bodies in in africa or in ghana or even in kumasi so again we try to sample these water take samples from some of these water bodies try to look out for some pathogens as well as some some chemicals we know that our farmers use a lot of um, uh, chemicals we decide and pesticides and so on and so forth so i guess these are some of the the things i'm currently working on the skills, yes, the resources, I don't think we are there yet. Of course, it also depends on our priorities. Um, elsewhere, people know that, um, especially in the industrialized um, nations, they believe that research is what will move their nations ahead. So I guess we ask for the academic bits and everything, but it has to do with um, the other resources, i.e. equipment, the intellect we have, the knowledge, the skills, we go there, we pick those skills. But you know, when you are done with your studies and you want to fully come back, then it becomes challenging because you may have been exposed to a lot of equipment, but you come back and then you don't find um, some of those resources. If you don't take care, so if you don't collaborate, then you end up becoming stale as, um, as someone who had been, who was groomed in uh, some of these countries. So I guess, um, and I think things are changing, maybe thanks to COVID, where we realize that indeed it's so important for us to use local things to solve our own problems but i guess it has to do with funding because if i need to execute or conduct a research activity or i have a research agenda i need the support so it can be financial it can be technical and so on and so forth so i pray that we change you know our perception when it comes to funding our own resources i mean sometimes christian will tell me that this this is a local problem so it needs to be solved locally the international people may not really benefit from solving such a problem so i think that we need to intentionally and purposefully 
try to you know dedicate some some funds to solve some of our local issues i have a couple of friends they are really interested in coming but you know like i said if they don't have the resources to work with i guess that is how come collaboration is very important because you collaborate and then at a point in time you sort of wean yourself off your collaborators but i think that for those out there who want to come back, they need to do it gradually. Indeed, if you decide to just come back at a goal, you will get the shock of your life. So you've got to still have hold on to your collaborators and sort of um, fill your lab with a number of equipment so that when you have said goodbye, really so very well, you have all the needed resources to enable you work so very well. I think there's a lot of hope. And now the current generation coming up, they all want to, most of them, not all of them, they want to come back. And I think this is what we need. We are so very well, we have the capacity, we have the intellect, and I think that we can solve our own problems. And maybe even one day helps, help solve some of their problems for them as well. Of course, some of the fond memories have um, been with the people I worked with and uh, the fact that I'm still able to, to work with them. Um, well, as an individual, I think um, I see myself um, being one of the few female virologists trying to solve some of the virology related problems we have. I guess that is how come I'm still holding on to my collaborators. Um, generally, I think 10 years time, I see Africa evolve, maybe as the next uh, <laughs> rulers of this world. But um, I think that this is, this is very, very possible for us as as Africans.